All right, let's tie a Charlie Boy hopper. Um, obviously, this is one of my favorite flies. I named this after my oldest son, Charlie, and uh, it's a uh, pretty quick, quick little uh, hopper pattern to tie. I came up with, uh, man, 20 years ago or so. I guess I can say that now. And this one's going to be tied on a Tiemco 100 SP BL size 8 is what this is. Now you can't get this hook anymore because I have that wonderful gift of finding things that I really like that they stop making right away. Um, but you could use a regular 100, uh, TMCO 100, in, in its place. Um, and what I've got here is a strip of thin fly foam that is cut to about the width of the inside of the hook gap. You can see when I set that in about how wide that is. And before I start the thread or anything, I'm going to take this piece of foam and I'll poke the hook through it right through the center about an inch from the end of the foam strip. And I'll thread that up around the bend, then I can chuck the hook in the vise. And I leave the long end sort of facing away from me for the moment. Now I'm going to take my thread here, and this is Danville 3 op Monocord in tan. Obviously you can tie this in whatever color you like. You just change your foam color, and change your thread color, change your rubber legs color. Um, it's easy enough to make those adjustments. I'm going to start this thread up here just behind the hook eye. I'm going to dress the hook shank with a nice, clean, smooth layer of thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. So once I get all the way back here, I'll come forward again. And you can see how I sort of cross-hatch that. You can see that's got some texture to it. So now I've got a scrap of foam that is about 2 by 2 millimeters. Um, about. It doesn't have to be exact. And this is going to be our binder strip. So I'm going to take this and set it in behind the hook eye here. Catch it with a couple turns. And then just spiral wrap back over it, all the way to the bend, kind of make a little band back there, and then I can cut that off, and I'll cross-hatch that piece of foam. That binder strip is to give us a, uh, a little surface area back there, or uh, down here on the hook shank, so we've got something to glue to here when we get to it. Now I'm going to take my piece of foam, my thread's hanging at the bend, I'm going to take my piece of foam and just pull it forward, and that'll push the thread to my near side. I'm going to slide this piece of foam up around the bend of the hook, right up against the binder strip. And you can see when I do that, this back end of this foam is elevated. And that's going to be important. We're going to want to make sure that that, that stays elevated uh, the whole time. You can also see that opens up the hook gap considerably here underneath the fly. So as I pull this piece of foam underneath the hook, I'm going to measure where the hook eye lines up. And again, poke a hole right through the center using the tips of my scissors. I go from both sides so it doesn't tear. And then I'll push the hook eye through that hole. like so. So I've got the foam threaded onto the hook at the bend and at the eye, like so. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of Zappa Gap, and I like the Zappa Gap with the brush. That makes a big difference as far as getting it applied smoothly and, and lightly. And I'm going to go and cover the entire upper surface of this foam. Binder strip everything up off the extended section. I want to cover all that. Um, if you're going to err, err on the thin side, less is, less is better than more. Um, I may have a bit more than I need. You can always use a scrap of foam to sort of wipe off the excess. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to fold this piece of foam from the front to the back. And you can see I kind of push it down onto the top of the, of the bottom layer. And then when I get to the bend here, I'm actually going to lift that elevated piece up so that I maintain that curvature like so. Um, that's stuck together very nicely. It doesn't always. I'm not really too concerned with it sticking together up here on the hook shank, but I am concerned with it staying stuck together back here as it extends off the bend of the hook. So um, if you've got a few gaps here along the shank, it's not a big deal. We'll have a chance to fix that. So now again, my thread is hanging back here at the bend. It's coming out the near side of the fly, right at the bend of the hook. I'm going to create my first segment here. So I'm going to come about halfway around and tighten Put two or three turns on there, just to create that first segment right there at the bend of the hook. And I do like to, before that glue gets too dry, I want to make sure everything's squared up on the hook shank. Now as I start to segment the body, I'm going to make three segments, but I need to think in fourths. So I want to move the thread forward about one-fourth of the shank length there, across the top, and make the first segment. 
I'll turn this so you can see what I just did there. You can see that that kind of comes across the top. So I'm going to move about a fourth of the way again. Create the second segment. And you can see I'm not making eight or ten turns to make each of those segments. I'm just making a turn or two. I'm trying to keep the bulk down. And then this last segment I'll just divide in half. So you can see how I made three segments there, but ended up with four. The fourth one is just left over. So now I'm going to come in with a double-edged razor blade. And this one's just been broken in half. And you can see how the back end of this fly extends up. What I'm going to do with this razor blade is I'm going to lay it flat along the top of the body and I'm just going to start to push it into that foam. So you can see the angle that that sets at. It's, you're looking right on the edge there. So that cut is going to come straight through the end of that foam. When it's all said and done, that, that cut looks like it's at an angle, but it is a straight flat cut. So to continue with that, I'm just going to push this sharp, sharp blade straight back through to cut that off and end up with that angled looking cut, although it's a flat cut and it's angled foam. You can see how the foam would fit back together. Um, this piece of foam is handy, that you've got left over here is handy. On the next one, if you've got too much super glue, that's pretty nice to butter that off with. Now one of the things that, uh, when I first started coming up with this fly, that I noticed with the real hopper is the back end of the body is fairly narrow. So I'm not going to cut this to a point, but I am going to cut it to a taper. So I'm just going to knock the edges off, like so. And then I'm going to take my double-edged blade, and I'm going to do the same things to the side of the head. Um, the head is a little bit wider here on this foam from where it's folded, so I'm just going to square that up as well. So I'm just going to cut a little sliver off of each side. Like so. So that head is now square and the same width as the rest of the body. Now for the legs, I'm going to take two strands of medium brown round rubber legs. I'm going to take one on each side, so I've just separated those two strands. And I'm going to start on my near side, and I'm going to catch this first leg in that first segment, and I try to keep that leg lined up with the seam in the foam. I'm just going to catch it with a single turn there on my near side. Then I'm going to cross my thread back over the top. I'm going to cross my thread back into that second segment and catch the leg again along the near side, just with the turn. And then again, I can sort of wiggle and position that as need be. And then to do the far side leg, I'm going to do the same steps in the opposite order. So I'm going to catch it at the back, cross my thread forward, and catch it again. And now I can trim these back legs. These back legs are going to be just a hair longer than the body. And the front legs are about two-thirds of that length, so they're a little shorter. And that right there was the original version of the Charlie Boy Hopper, just like that. And it actually catches fish just fine. It's super simple. Problem is, is it's very hard to see. You know, as you look at it here on the screen, it's a fly that's an inch long and a relatively light tan color. You wouldn't think it would be that hard to see. And if you're fishing from a boat where you're looking down on top of it, that's the view that you get. Um, the problem is, is when you're wade fishing, the view that you get is this little narrow profile that we've got from the front. So not much profile. So I came home and tried to add something to the top of it and what I eventually settled on was deer hair which worked wonderfully for it because it adds some uh, surface area to the fly, makes the fly a lot more buoyant and uh, gives you a little bit more uh, silhouette on top so that you got something that you can actually hunt for on the water. So the wing on this is going to be made out of white-tailed deer hair um, and this is typically sold by Nature Spirit. It's called Humpy Deer. Um, I don't use spinning deer. The tips aren't very good. Humpy Deer has t tends to have very nice tips. And I'm going to take a pretty good sized bunch. Very often I'm using this fly as a dry dropper fly. Um, so I want it to be extra buoyant. So I cut a pretty good sized bunch of hair off. Off of the skin here. Give you an idea of what I just cut out of there. And I'm going to hold it as close to the tips as I can. And clean all this under fur out. And I'd love to show this to you, but... Um, all that under fur ends up all over me and all over everything else on top of the desk and the camera and it drives me nuts so you'll have to 
just trust me that all I did was that and that to pull all that junk out of the bottom. So now I'm going to take this clump of hair and I'm going to put it in my medium sized stacker and the right amount of hair just about fills up the inside of a medium stacker if I kind of get that in there where you can see it. You can see that just about fills that that hole. And I'm going to stack it up so it's nice and square and even on the ends. I'm going to pull that hair out of the stacker. lost a few of them there. I'm going to measure this clump against the hook and I want it to be about a hook length long so from the hook eye to the bend. And what I'm using to measure is my thumbnail here on this back side. So once I've got that measurement I'm going to change hands and I'm going to go ahead and do this up here where you can see it. I can't get too close here but I'm going to come up with my scissors, a good sharp pair of scissors. I'm going to make one clean cut just past the ends of my fingers here, like so. You see what kind of mess that made, but that gave you the idea. What I want is a clean square edge on this clump of hair. I'm going to clean that up just a bit. So I'm going to take this clump of hair, I'm going to set these butt ends about halfway up the head of the fly. So the butt ends line up with about halfway up the head of the fly. I'm going to bring my thread up and over. I'm just going to start to crease the hair. So just a little tug on the thread um, to crease the hair right there. I'm going to put my index finger against the far side of the hook. and I'm going to pull straight down on the thread. And that's going to flare that hair up into a nice, neat, little round spun ball. The reason this comes out so nice and round right here is because I cut it square on the ends. Had I had a ragged cut there, if I went in after the fact and tried to clean it up, it wouldn't come out nearly as round. You can see how that starts to kind of finish out the head shape of the fly. Now for the whip finish, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to go right through those butt ends. About three turns. I don't have to put a lot of tension on it because I'll tighten it down here. and You can see how that hair will sort of flare up a bit. One short one in there. You can see how much surface area we've got. We've got a big widespread wing. And then one last little thing that I do to every one of these that I tie, and that really is the truth, is I'm going to use a Sharpie marker and put a couple of eyeballs on him. Because flies with eyes cast more accurately than flies that don't have eyes because they can see where they're going. So it's not a dot, it's kind of a long oval, like a real hopper's eye, one on each side, super easy. You can come in and put a little shot of head cement along those thread wraps, although honestly this fly uh, sure takes a beating. I've never had this fly come apart. The deer hair will get chewed off if you catch a pile of fish on it, but the foam body, um, I have one sitting on the visor in my truck right now that's got teeth marks in it that um, I could still go out and catch fish on it tomorrow. It's still in perfectly fine shape, but it's it's chewed all to hell. Um, really a pretty quick quick to tie fly. You know, I sit and talk about it, and, and it takes 10 minutes to tie or 15 minutes to tie. Um, in the case of a uh, real-life scenario, this is about a two- or three-minute fly. If you've got your foam cut and your legs cut, everything goes together pretty quickly. Um, a great dry dropper fly. This is my, my main uh, dry fly in my hopper copper dropper rigs. Uh, very quick and easy to tie, um, great profile, um, took way longer to develop than it does to tie. But that is the finished Charlie Boy Hopper. Tie some of these up, take them out, hang a, a two-bit hooker or a Copper John or um, you know a CDC Golden Stone, hang something like that underneath them and see what doesn't come and find them. Um, really a fun, fun fly to fish, fun, fun fly to tie, fills the box up quick, looks good, everybody likes it, hope you do too.